Now, we've spoken a lot about the female experience of labour on Lose Women, obviously, but hardly ever from a man's perspective. Very and we've true. We've got two men here today, so we thought we would talk mm. about it today. And that's because a leading obstetrician who's been in charge of more than 15,000 births in his 50 plus year career, he told us that the presence of a father in a del delivery room is not only unnecessary, but also hinders labour. The emotional fallout of, you know, watching their partner have their baby can never be overcome. In some cases, uh, and particularly he was talking about a friend of his, it can actually lead to divorce. What a lot of nonsense. Yeah, what is that about? Well, well, come on. Well, you've had a baby. How old is yeah. Rex? Nine months? He's nine months. So... No, I've got, yeah, I've got... We have had babies yeah. between us. Exactly. Yeah. I, I really struggle with this, because I feel, like, through personal experience as well, and through the media and stuff like that, the role as a father that we've got, it gets chipped away at and is diminished bit by bit. Mm. I mean, yeah. there's my little boy. I mean, I wouldn't want to be anywhere in the world apart from in that room when Stacey and my baby, baby was being born. One, not only because he's my baby, but because, you know, Stacey needs the person that she loves. I know I weren't the best in there, but I tried my hardest, didn't I? I, I? I would never deny a man the right to be in the birthing yeah. room. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. What I will say is, I understand where some of the points that this doctor is making about not necessarily being helpful and sometimes... There was... There... I know exactly what you're going to say. No, no. I've, I've honestly... It, it wouldn't have mattered who was in the room. I was giving birth and I was literally just like, get the hell away from me, let me push this baby out of my vagina. But <laughs> I, I, there were a couple of moments, weren't there, yeah. questionable moments when I did think, what the hell is he doing? There was a moment when the doctor said that they were going to burst Stacey's waters. And just break them, just break them. <laughs> and I was like, in my head, I, I automatically thought, I don't want to see that. And I don't want to hear it either. Well, I'm not so going to do it. I went to the wall and just looked at the wall and started banging on the wall. No, this is, this is what happened. So I'm on the bed, legs in stirrups, and they get the big hanger hook thing out. And they're like, we're just oh, going to break the wall. It makes funny already. So anyway, they're, they're doing it, and I'm like this. You know, we're from the adrenaline of just yeah. being in so much pain. And all I can hear is... <sighs> <laughs> I didn't even know it was Joe at the time, but I was just like, Who's Joe? <laughs> on the wall. It's a funny, it's a funny, vulnerable situation for a man in a labour room. But I do think, you know, that we don't get a fair crack at the whip as fathers. No, I mean, we don't. Whether right. it's in in the eyes of the law, we're mocked or... at, we're derided, yeah. we're useless. But when so Mother's not... Day's come in, you don't see nothing but Mother's Day adverts yeah. on the telly. You yeah. don't see nothing for Father's no, Day. No, no. I just I think, think you, do oh, you, do. Yeah, do. you do. Yeah, you do. Now. But you're right. In terms of the law, and in terms of the way that perhaps we Media perceive and... childcare in general, we yeah. often say if there's a, an advert for nappies, if there's an advert for baby food, it's generally yeah, a woman mum. and yeah. the mum. I think that is slightly changing now. But the thing is, we. Also, midwives you talk to will often say, you know, as much as they appreciate, you know, you obviously love Stacey, you want to be there, it's your mm. baby, but they have a job to do, and the job to do is to deliver the baby safely and make sure the mother is I'm safe. Not, You're not pushing the baby I won't putting the gloves on okay? and getting involved. So, when something happens, they don't care that you don't want to hear the sound of breaking yeah. waters or thing. and often they, you know, fathers faint, they step over them, don't they? Because they're like, sorry, guys, but <laughs> this is not your moment. Yeah, I understand that, so that someone's at your, work. It is your moment. First of all, I just want to say, midwives... Yeah. The second thing I would say, if it's not our moment, why did you insist that the door was bolted and I was locked inside the room? Because <laughs> you kept going out visiting all the nurses and the women in other rooms. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's not spe speaking true. That's true. There were requests coming true. in from the general ward that people wanted to meet me. Yeah. <laughs> so, not, so that. Was, I wasn't denying. Yeah. I literally, at one point, I was lying like that. I was having a little moment in between contractions. You know, it was just like a little quiet moment. I thought, you'll get going in a minute. And then the door opened and I said, Eamon, would you mind coming and just saying hello to and you got Brown jealous. in room You got three. jealous. You got fan. jealous, didn't you? And he went. And he went. And then the next contraction came and like, I suddenly went, get him back in! <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. I but I do feel, them, right? I feel a bit for men because lots of men you talk to say they do feel a little bit helpless. They want mm. to be there, they want to help, 
Uh, you know, Eamon patted me a lot, which I know he was doing in a lovely, kind, encouraging way. And you were way, very hot, and they patted you down with a wet towel. You sloshed a wet flannel in yeah. right in my face. And incidentally, <laughs> and incidentally, if it wasn't for me, you didn't recognise you were in labour. I recognised you, did, you actually, in labour. That's true. And I when sped we were through the traffic. Wow. I was like, I was like Lewis Hamilton. I got through the traffic. <laughs> I got there on time at the hospital, and all I was was derided and abused the whole way. <laughs> Why are we going down this road? Why are you turning left? Why are you going? Whereas I had it meticulously planned, the whole route to the hospital. Can I tell you, that is a complete lie. So that's why. <laughs> because, because they told us to do a dry run. They said, that, you know, it's really good I hadn't got time for a dry run. I didn't a need a dry run. run. So the day I said to Eamon, right, tomorrow, what time are you home from work? We're going to do this dry run to the hospital. Absolutely, darling. I'll be there. Don't worry. Anyway, he was on his phone, on his phone. I kept saying, should we do this? I said, right, I'll drive. So he got in the car and he stayed on his phone. It's on business phone call, and I was driving along like this, getting angrier and angrier, and I was going, and then you turn oh, right you. here, and he was like, right, OK, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, carried on. We got to a roundabout, which is near the hospital, but it doesn't have the sign, and I knew, and I said, and when you get here, it's that way. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew a shortcut. Come the day, I'm, <laughs> come the day, I'm in labour in the car, you know, in a small car, going like, oh, and he got to the roundabout and he stopped. And I could see his eyes darting. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and said, you don't know, you don't know the way, do you? You don't know the way. And he's like, I do. And he took a route. We went round all these back these roads. These were in the days before sat in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going the shortcut. But you I'm got there. You got there. I did get there. I did get Thanks there. Thanks to me. <laughs> they do all that and then they steal your gas in here. That's all I'm saying. I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah. the one thing I was looking... Not the one thing. I was looking forward to the baby as well. <laughs> but I kept thinking... I'm really going to crack on with that gas and air when we get to the hospital. <laughs> Can you imagine? Stacey wasn't even using it, but she that was so weird. <laughs> she, she wouldn't... She was worried about my lurgy. She wouldn't let me have a little bit of gas and air. I was gutted, honestly. I needed it. It runs out, that can. It's not a never-ending can of gas and air. <laughs> and if it runs out, what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do, Jo? I didn't have none in the listen to, the listen to this. Emma says, my husband and my mum were with me, sitting in the corner doing a crossword. When I told them I needed to push, they told me to hang on because they were stuck on nine down. <laughs> 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 Keep those coming. There are lots coming of those. Thank you very much. We'll try and read out a few more a bit later on.